good morning. Nice to share a little more with you today. I hope you enjoyed the blog on the eco concept of energy, chemistry, hydration, and organics. Today I'd like to talk about the four steps to mental emotional freedom that I use for myself and have shared with thousands of clients around the world and thought I might share a little with you on that today. To go back to our previous discussion, I just wanted to highlight that the first step to mental emotional self-freedom, which is included in the four steps I'm going to share with you, is getting your inner echo and your outer echo to harmonize with each other. Remember, your inner echo is your energy, your chemistry, being adequately hydrated, and eating organic food sources that are of a high enough quality that you would like to make a body out of them and all the good stuff inside of you. The outer environment means the energy available to us through the universe and the earth itself, the chemistry that we must seek to keep in balance so that things that feed us, the planet itself, stays healthy. If we pollute the oceans and poison everything, then we throw the chemistry of all living organisms off, which we then eat. So what we do out there, we do in here. Hydration, if we waste water and we aren't conscious with how we manage soils, then we put ourselves into a challenging situation because only about 1% of the world's water is drinkable by humans. And then organisms means where it's organics for you because you eat it, it's organics outside as organisms because we need to keep the organisms healthy that create nature and support us. Any attempt at mental emotional self-management without looking at your inner echo and the influence of your outer echo is going to be symptomatic or symptom-based at very, very best and will never actually get you anywhere in the long run except maybe on pills and other shortcuts. So that said, Let's talk about the four steps that I prescribe and use myself for my own mental emotional self-management. It's not working. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, number one is, what do you love enough to change for? As I often quote psychologist Jerry Wesch, when you have a big enough dream, you do not need a crisis. So what do you love enough to change for, to grow for, to become? What you love is what you desire, and to the degree that you authentically desire, desire produces will. That's the nature of love. To the degree that it desire, it wills. So first, identify what your chief love is that you're willing to change for. That becomes the equivalent of your GPS coordinates. Two, there's only two forces that create everything in the universe. The feminine, yin, the masculine, yang, and those two create the environment. So your outer echo is created out of the two forces of yin and yang, and so are you created out of the forces of yin and yang. The female force is the cooling, slowing, inclusive force of unity. The male force is the individuating, expanding, outward moving, radiating, heating force of the masculine and everything is created out of those two. No, neither one of them is better or worse than the other, but in order to balance ourselves we must pay attention to the qualities of yin the feminine in our life and, and yang the masculine because too much fire burns the pot and we run out of water and too much water and not enough fire and nothing happens. We just are very sluggish and, and unproductive. So your first step of the formula is what do I love enough to change for? Your second step is where am I out of balance? And where am I out of balance now can be looked at from the fourth step I'm going to share, so we'll, we'll highlight that in a second. So two is the balance, which relates to your echo principle. Three is the choices. There's only three choices you can really make in relationship to any person, place, or thing, including yourself as a person, I, myself, can only make choices in relationship to me, myself. One, the optimal choice, which is the one that's best for everybody involved in the creation of your chief dream, goal, or objective. 
to the suboptimal force. Usually gives you instant gratification, but often causes pain on your dream team. But it's still an effective choice because there's a lot of learning that you can gain from making these suboptimal choices. And you learn how to communicate more effectively, for one, and how to share more effectively with your dream team. The third is has two components, do nothing, which means don't move forward until you can make an intelligent decision. So whenever you're having feeling like you've got to make a decision, but you don't have the information or the resources you need to make an intelligent decision, just call a timeout for yourself, gather the necessary information, and then make the choice from a place that is congruent with the alignment of your dream or the direction of your dream. Um, do nothing also means to not care. That's the negative component or indifference. So one who does not care is, is expressing a very sad state and reflects their need for echo balance and finding a dream. Finally, four, the fourth step for mental emotional self-management is to remember there's only four doctors or sources of inner wisdom. The word doctor actually means teacher, so the four doctors means the four teachers within. So Dr. Diet and Dr. Quiet, Dr. Movement and Dr. Happiness. Dr. Movement and Dr. Quiet relate to the primary forces that create the universe and those are expressed in us. And Dr. Happiness relates to what is my dream and how will I use my own mind to create what I want. And Dr. Diet is how do I fuel and embody the dream. So when we look at the echo, energy, chemistry, hydration, organics or organisms, Dr. Diet handles most of that. And so does Dr. Happiness because that's the choice. And by making effective choices to fuel your dream, you're supporting the vertical axis or the energy in the environment, the outer environment. If you buy organic food, you're supporting the outer environment. If you buy from people that are water conscious, you're supporting the outer environment. So once we get down to number four, we see that the four doctors, diet, quiet, movement, and happiness, all relate to how we create. <clears throat> and either one of those is codependent on the others. If you have diet, quiet and happiness, but you don't have movement, you're in trouble. If you have too much movement without enough quiet or sleep, you're in trouble. If you have good dreams and you're getting enough sleep and you're doing exercise, but you're eating poor quality food, you're in trouble. So in order to manage our mind and have a calm or an effective use or sense of our mental emotional flow, all those doctors have to be in balance or the mind reflects the imbalance. The key thing in order to make this work in the long run is one, establishing values, which I show you how to do in my 1, 2, 3, 4 for Overcoming Addiction, Obesity, and Disease program, and also my last four doctors you'll ever need how to get healthy now ebook. It's There's a workbook in there. But the key thing is once you know what your dream is, you need values to support it, and those values fall under the heading of the four doctors. What are my values? that will help me stay in a state of happiness. What do I need to eat? When do I need to sleep? And how much movement do I need to embody my dream? Now, I call the pain teacher the part of ourself that seems to get in the way of those experiences. Once we know what our dream is, inevitably we find that we have ideas or fears or unconscious programming that get in the way. So when you consider that Deepak Chopra recently cited um, that the average person thinks 68,000 thoughts a day, 90% of which were found to be negative in orientation, you can see that that's what I call the pain teacher. We are constantly being given a chance to fall back into our old habit patterns, which have become facilitated in our nervous system. Each time you think a thought or create an action, it gets easier to think the thought or create the action due to the way the nervous system works. So once we have thoughts rise up or emotions rise up that are antagonistic to the direction of our newly um, accepted or desired dream that we're ready to embody, we simply say, ah, thank you, pain teacher, for showing me that I'm thinking thoughts that are not congruent with my dream. Immediately affirm your grace for the opportunity to recognize or be aware of the unproductive thought and then restate the thought in a way that is affirmative of your dream. So for example, you might your dream might be to 
be a public speaker, but your shadow self might keep telling you, oh, you're never going to be able to do that. What if people ask you questions you can't answer? What if you get ridiculed, etc.? So as soon as you hear a thought like that, you say, oh, thank you, pain teacher. I'm so grateful for your awareness. I am excited to be a public speaker because I know I'm only speaking to myself. The world is my family and I'm excited to share my knowledge and my experience with them. That is a positive transformation. We never go into battle like, why do I keep thinking those thoughts? Damn it, there's something wrong with me. Because that further engages and energizes the old pathway. So don't engage with the negative aspects. They have to be deactivated. You've got to stop running energy through them. And just like a tree will die if you don't water it, if you don't run these thoughts through your conscious mind repeatedly, you, can't ener you won't energize them and they atrophy, so to speak. The neural pathways begin to dissolve and you will maintain the pathways that you put your consciousness and your energy into. It can take some time, but it's a worthy investment of your time. If you feel like you're having challenging thoughts, you know, maybe like you want to commit suicide or, you know, self-destructive thoughts, I want to drink more alcohol even when you know it's not good for you, always just pause and ask yourself, am I safe right now? If you have food, water, safety, shelter, you're breathing and there's love in your life and you know that this is just a temporary, uh, you know, entanglement. If you're safe, that means you can pause and you can turn it over to spirit, let the earth carry it, hold still, take a few breaths, let yourself relax inside, and then reorient yourself to your dream and repeat that one, two, three, four process. What is my love? Where am I out of balance? What choices do I need to make to put myself back into balance? And how do those choices relate to the four docker values that I have? My values around what makes me happy, what should I eat, how much movement and what type should I do? How much sleep do I need? Diet, quiet, movement, and happiness. So that's my little simple tips today for mental, emotional self-management. Balance your eco environment inside and outside. Get clear on what you love more than your pain and that you're willing to energize. Find balance according to your values of the four doctors. Make intelligent choices and edit your thoughts, not by fighting with the negative ones, but by affirming the beauty that your awareness soul is bringing you into awareness of old programming. Detach from the old, energize the new, stand back, and watch what happens. Aho! Great spirit! I'll see you soon. Thanks for joining me today.